And it's why people need to pay attention to kind of what's going on out there beyond Teams and Zoom. Uh, this is a really important factor. And I, I'm going to put it to you based on my personal experience. I have been teaching since 2009 at the University of North Carolina, and I've taught uh, young millennials, right? And all the old generation Z over that period of time. So I've had six or seven years worth of Gen Z and five, six years worth of millennials. I cannot remember a single time where they've done any kind of collaboration in a class on any platform other than Google. I can just tell you whether you like that or not, you're a Google fan or not, I'm telling you, students are using the heck out of Google's suite of products. Now that's gone through iterations and it's called different things. I think the latest version of it's called Google Workspace or Workplace, which, which encompasses all the Google stuff. And they, you know, meat is nothing for them. They, this is like just, you know, they've been doing it since they were little kids because K through 12 do is dominated by uh, by Google and uh, college students use the heck out of it. And they're using it when they graduate and they're going to their company saying, why are we using these complicated file transfer? Why can't we just use Google Docs since we're already on Google? So it's, it's going to change the world. I think uh, people are going to have to stand up and look. And so that kind of leads me into why we're doing this panel today and why we're talking about uh, Google Meet, because if you have, I'm make this statement, if you have not yet been asked by a customer to integrate Google Meet, you will, and it'll happen quickly. I'm surprised if you're selling UC platforms already that you haven't been asked, but if you haven't been asked, you're about to be asked. So you're about to get a good lesson on why you need to care. So I'm going to bring up my two panelists. Uh, one's from Lenovo and one is from Google. So we have great, uh, we have great, two great panel panelists here today. Uh, Lewis, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, hey Gary, thanks. Uh, nice to meet everybody. I'm Lewis Berlanga and I lead North American sales for Lenovo. And we're responsible for cloud connected human interface products like the series one for Google Meet. And that is the whole product line that is specifically for Google Meet. We'll get back to that in uh, just a moment. Uh, um, Gabriel, will you introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Gary. Uh, Gabriel Albani, a Unified Communications Specialist here at uh, Google, focusing on our Google Meet, uh, Google Meet hardware for our, our room offers, as well as our voice products. Yeah, and you, you, it's interesting because, Gabriel, you have experience beyond Google, so you know what it was like in some of the toughest days. There's probably not very many platforms more difficult to use than Cisco. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm allowed to say that. Maybe you're not allowed to say that, but I can tell you that... Uh, it's interesting because we now have, you know, with, with Microsoft Teams front row, we have sort of a uh, Cisco-like, telepresence-like uh, platform that's out there. And I think you're going to see more of that coming. Uh, but you've been involved, obviously, with WebEx. Um, you were at uh, Cisco for uh, prior to being at, at uh, Google with WebEx. And then you were with Broadsoft before. So I I'm very happy to have you here. And I appreciate your insights. Um, just right up front, um, you know, can you share any kind of data with us with regard to, you know, the usage of, uh, you know, Google as a collaborative platform, not necessarily meet only, but, you know, as I said, all my students are using docs, my entire company. I'm the only person in the company, honestly, and I'm the oldest in the company. So that might tell you something. I'm the only person in the company that doesn't regularly use Google docs every single day. The rest, everyone else in my company does. Gabriel. Wow. Yeah, that, that, that's fascinating. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we, we have huge penetration of uh, usage across all of the uh, all of the applications in the, in the workspace portfolio. I mean, just as you alluded to, you know, day in, day out, most of our users spend their time uh, in the Gmail application specifically. And from there, you can pivot out into any of the other applications in the suite. Uh, what we find is that, uh, you know, collaborating in the documentation in real time really just, you know, reduces the amount of complexities that you need to connect with colleagues through other communication modalities throughout the day. So simplifying and accelerating uh, the collaboration and making for more meaningful engagements with, uh, you know, strong desired out outcomes. And, and obviously meet is, um, you know, it's there, right? I mean, it's, it's there. And I think that, I think it, kind of got overlooked in the beginning of the UC wards, whatever you want to say with regard to the video platforms, um, because, uh, and I don't know exactly what happened. I, I really don't know because all this K through 12, they all had Google meet there, but they all jumped on zoom for whatever. If you look at the data, they all jumped on zoom for whatever reason to teach remote classes. But, but now all of a sudden, uh, over that period of time during the pandemic, y'all beefed it up considerably. Like this is a totally different platform than it was prior to the pandemic. You're absolutely right. 
Yeah, you know, we we did admittedly find ourselves a little bit behind the curve in feature functionality. Um, you know, usage was uh, was moderate at the time, but obviously with the overnight turnover to remote working and you know virtual collaboration and no, no more in person uh, meetings and, and the like. Uh, we had to quickly accelerate our, our adoption of, uh, of feature functionality in the platform. Now, you know, the, the likes of Zoom obviously becoming a, a household brand name, the, the Kleenex of the, like the <laughs> tissues, for example, right? I mean, everyone came home and said, what, what can we do? We were in a panic situation. We need something. And, and Zoom was the default because they had already been using that from a consumer perspective. Um, but enterprises did quickly recognize that, you know, the other industry players, you know, had more solid, secure, robust, um, you know, uh, solutions out there. And, and we recognized the need to quickly accelerate our feature development. And then you saw pretty much overnight Hangouts convert into Meet and, you know, from there on out. I mean, we simplify the user interface so that uh, you're presented with a green room immediately upon connecting before you go into the actual meetings. You can get yourself uh, audio, video all, all situated correctly and, and presented properly. And get in the meeting and have a limited feed, you know control set available to you so that you're focused on the actual task at hand which is collaborating and being effective with your colleagues partners and customers and by the way i want to mention um the this the platform we've been using as a back-end production platform for uh for all our launch events since about launch week three and then beyond and for all of our clients has been based on google meet uh, so you've been actually using and seeing how we how we do stuff uh, because the production platform we use is based on that and it's actually using it at its core. Um, and I think that's a big differentiator because of the resolution we'll be able to output consistently versus Zoom and Teams. And I think that that may benefit you by starting a little bit later because you could sort of start with let's fix the resolution issues early rather than let's fix them after we fix the platform. Um, I don't have any data there or not, but but I'm, I'm going to tee something up for you, Louis. Uh, we're going to I want to ask you about. Uh, I want to ask you about the the Series One product line, right? Uh, obviously, uh, you have a, a version of it specifically uh, specifically for the Google um, Meet platform. Um, Lenovo has been a big player in UC for a while, and uh, the the big differentiator they bring to the table compared and, and correct me for all this, but the big differentiator you, I feel like you bring to the table is the fact that you have that ex, that long heritage and expertise in in the compute side, which is ultimately the driver to be able to customize this and also be able to deploy it very easily. Yeah, I think um, using the phrase, the engine that powers the room is, is kind of what we're really leaning into. You know, Lenovo is, is the number one manufacturing, PC manufacturer on the planet and that's full stop, right? And so I think if you start looking at what is it that we do at our core, uh, it makes a lot of sense when you start talking about cloud connected platforms like Google, yeah especially yep. for Google Meet, right? With Chrome OS, there's a lot of things that we do with the Series 1 that is part of, you know, the overall experience. Um, the Series 1 was developed, co-developed with, with Google, uh, mostly for the experience. The audio pieces are a big portion of the experience. You know, you talked about resolution, but the most important thing of any conversation over video is always the audio because we can lose image and still have the conversation. But if you can see me and not hear me, then it's a bad, bad experience. And so the, the true voice piece of the series one is probably the number one thing that we get the most comments about. And then the second piece would be just the ease of deployment, right? The way the, the kits come, they're small, medium, and large. Actually, we have a medium light now as well, but uh, they're all interconnected through RJ45 CAT6 e cabling, right? So the traditional AV, need to run funky cables is not there. Uh, the ability to take advantage of things like, you know, the, the distance that Ethernet gives you in, in a cable run, uh, and then making it easy to deploy by folks that aren't necessarily AV people, right? It becomes a, a big shot in the arm to get adoption and most importantly, utilization driving in, amongst an organization. And, and, and I think it's just awareness is the problem right now, because I think that um, you know, if you're if you're dealing with like a lot of clients that are dominated by companies that started in Silicon Valley or young uh, professionals, meaning I'd say under the age of 35, they're asking for the Google stuff all the time. I mean, they're already in Meet and they're asking for Meet rooms. And I think that you know, I th I think that 
eventually every like there's not a lot of startups of a bunch of people in their 20s in new york city let's be honest in chicago <laughs> they might do it in miami austin and northern california those are the out there products. maybe they're out there the, what's that? i think the big things though is is really it's very much generational right you, yes. you took you talked about cisco who had a lot of this technology yeah. in the early days uh companies like polycom and life size that were making big iron devices right yeah. they were expensive to deploy but they also were kind of hard to make talk to each other yeah and then you talk about from a generational perspective you know these companies are digital natives these are companies that were born in the cloud more app-based organizations that are used to being in the cloud that are used to being able to you know hey i'm just somewhere wherever my laptop is and i'm connected i'm good to go you know to them the idea of work is where you go doesn't really resonate work is where you are Right. Right. So if I'm in a hotel room, I'm yeah. in the Admirals Club, you know, I've been a full time telecommuter since 1999 uh, personally. And, um, you know, I always tell people I'm based out of the Admirals Club at Terminal C at TFW <laughs> because that's really what it is. Right. And so yeah. video is the one thing that kind of bridges the, that geography, bridges the gaps because we need to be able to have these kinds of experiences. Yeah. But I think that the real buy in to platforms is what are you the most comfortable with? Right. You've got aging yep. baby boomers that are kind of starting to exit the businesses and organizations. They're used to big, nice fat corner office. Gen Xers like me, we're happy to live in cubicle land. But yeah. the reality is millennials and Gen Z, they want to work from this thing yep. or whatever is going to get them connected to this. And those are the things that I think are the biggest players. When you look at Google Workspace is that everything is wherever you are and wherever you go. And adding video to that makes it super easy. And then what Lenovo is trying to do is really kind of bridge the gap between those generations, between folks that are trying to be in conferences room. They need to be in conference room. They just feel better being in the office. I think you need to take care of those as well. And then from a hybrid perspective, you always got to care for those resources that are external or in, in different geographies. Um, I think the pandemic showed us a lot of that is super productive. But I think you're still going to have to have some way to be connected uh, in a real meaningful way. And that's that's really what we see the series one providing. Yeah. And there's no question we're going to be going back to the office and be in conference rooms at some point in time uh, on certain days. In other words, uh, at a minimum, companies are requiring the majority of their 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 people to go in the office two days a week that used to go into Austin. And, and most are in the range of three days a week, even Google themselves said originally you can work remote and then they said like kind of you can work remote and then they're like no nah, you got to come in the office at least a couple of days a, a week so i mean a company even a company that's that's focused on the cloud re recognizes the the value of of being in person so i, I want to play this video because you have small medium and large rooms and i think people don't realize that very, very similarly, what they used to with Zoom rooms and Teams room, you have the small, the medium, and the large requirements and certification. So let's run this because this is the Lenovo product suite. Hybrid work is here to stay, and collaboration has never been more important. The Google Meet Series 1 room kits from Lenovo provide turnkey solutions for any size meeting room. The small room kit comes with a compute system, smart camera, smart audio bar, and a remote, making effective collaboration simple. The medium room kit adds a microphone pod, a touch controller in place of the remote. For bigger groups, the large room kit provides a smart camera XL with two smart audio bars and two mic pods. And all Google Meet Series 1 room kits feature power over ethernet, which means both the power and network cable are combined into one for faster and easier installation. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously you have the small kit, the medium kit and the large kit. You've got the similar configurations. You've got the AI built into this product, uh, both on, on both on the hardware side and the software side. Um, you've got it all um, in the you got the compatibility in the cloud. You got the remote connectivity. It's all what everyone is familiar with. It's just a it's a knowledge base of whether or not they know this product line exists, exists. So I'm, I'm curious, sort of from Lenovo's perspective, um, you obviously, you know, obviously probably don't have data yet on uh, where you think the growth curve is going to be with this platform. But it seems to me that uh, the biggest growth is going to happen around meat uh, if we look forward three to five years from now. 
Yeah, I, I think if you really look at what the platform delivers, so the number one thing is all those kits are, are really interchangeable. And so what we try to do is make it easily consumable, um, but the the products and the components all work with each other. So if you wanted to make a small kit into a medium kit, you could do that. If you wanted to make a large kit into a medium kit, as you scroll through and grow your exposure and your experience in this space, that's all super easy to do. The other pieces though, when you start really considering the growth of where this thing is going, I think the fact that, uh, you know, that Gabe mentioned earlier when the transition from Hangouts into Meet really took off is where you started to see not only those digital native companies, but those other larger enterprise organizations that were on things like Cisco and are looking to go do something different. Obviously Microsoft is there, yeah, Zoom is there, but from a real platform perspective, Google makes it super easy. It's all contained. It's all very easy to deploy. Uh, and that's the piece that I think is, as customers see and feel this experience, they're gonna be looking for this kind of a solution. And so when you, start, you, when you start really looking at it, right, it says the growth of Google happens, when if you really look at, you know, you, you mentioned your, your students, right, who are gonna age out, graduate, yeah. enter the workforce and say, hey, where's my hang, where's my meet, where's my slides, where's my Gmail? Those are the things that they want. So it's going to be very much feeding of itself as as Google's platform grows, as the cloud grows, so will the need to interact and provide a human interface perspective. And quite honestly, I, I'm a, maybe a little bit biased, but I think, you know, the Lenovo Series 1 is, is the best on the market. And it, it's for a myriad of reasons. Uh, but the best reason I have is, is it's so easy to use. And that goes along with everything that Google does, especially in workspace and in Meet. Yeah. And, and one thing that's quite unique about the way that Google's integrated uh, the rest of the platform, the wor workspace platform into Meet is that you don't have to share the screen the way you do with the other platforms where you're getting the whole screen with all the wrap around it. Slides goes right into Meet and you don't you don't lose a separate input and you also don't lose the, you don't have the wrapper around it. You have just the slide. Uh, and uh, you don't look at, you don't see the fumbling of the slide carousel versus the slide. It's, it's so much more seamless. Um, and yeah, if you're not using uh, slides, Google slides inside workspace, you wouldn't notice this, but when you are, you start to notice these things. And Gabriel, this is why I think this is going to make a big difference as people age up. Um, again, like I said, if you're, if you're already talking to software companies and hardware and, and uh, startups, people who are digital native dominated by digital natives, they're already asking for, for meat, but at some point in time, all the integrators. So the point here is, is that they need to, they need to, they need to find a vendor that they need to deal with it, that has a Google Meet story and has a uh, product line. And Lenovo has that entire product line. Obviously, you must be happy that uh, that you have a brand like Lenovo behind you, uh, Gabriel. Yeah, absolutely. The The collaboration between Lenovo and Google is uh, is second to none. You know, very, very strong and tight cooperation and coordination for the teams to, to come to market with such an amazing product. Um, you know, to your point, um, you know, millennials and, and the like, there's the, the digital no, nomads of the of the new workforce are demanding this technology. And Google's done a great job in seeding that, obviously. Um, but Google's also digital first. So as opposed to or online, you know, first uh, as opposed to our competitors in the landscape who are, you know, software you install on your desktop. And now they're trying to struggle in terms of how do we come with a a truly online offer, whereas that's how we started. Um, you know, and just like you mentioned as well, you know, in slides for for an example, uh, across all of the workspace applications, you can quickly and easily launch uh, your communication modality of your choice. So you're in uh, <clears throat> collaborating on a, on a slide, you can press the meet button right there in that interface, no need to switch screens or devices or anything like that and immediately have collaboration session with your, with your colleagues who are uh, co-collaborating in that document. And it already knows who's co-collaborating in that document too, which is really cool. You don't have to invite them. It just instantly invites them when you're collaborating in the document. There's a comment that came in from Ross Bradley that I wanted to respond to that I'm gonna see if Gabriel, if you wanna to respond to it as well. Um, he said, does the fact that Google has captured substantial K through 12 market automatically, he's on live watching, mean that their future employers will move to the platform once the generation joins the workforce? Here, here's the analogy I'll use. I remember very vividly people in the IT department saying, we will never put this device on the network. This is the Apple iPhone. We will never put, 
And there wasn't a person in IT that didn't say that. And what ended up happening was one day someone in the C-suite came in and said, why can't I connect this to our network? And they're like, okay, I guess we got to put that on the network. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. You're right. He's right. And that the younger generation that maybe is not quite in power yet may have a little hard time convincing them, but it's going to happen because people were going to demand the actual applications be used. That's how I would respond to that. Uh, that, that, that isn't going to happen overnight, Ross, but it's going to happen not just because people start working there, but because when they start working there, they get, you know, they find out, I found, put it this way, I'm old. I find out about most of the cool new things from my young students and my young employees, uh, team members. That's how I find out about them. It's not like, and I'm, and a lot of times I'll say, great, y'all keep using it and I'll use what I'm going to use. But a lot of times I find a lot of value in what they're providing, what they're bringing to the table. Uh, Gabriel, what do you think? Well, I, I think you're absolutely right. And, you know, to add to that, it, employees are, are demanding, right, what, what they're used to and familiar with, um, you know, in the, in the workspace. And if the employer is not offering the collaboration suite that the employees want, then the employee is going to select a different company to go work for. And that's just <laughs> the, the, the nature of it today. Yeah, that's true. I have a question. I don't know who to send this to. Gabriel, you might, you might have to answer this. Does Google, for this is from Kevin Jimmel, does Google have a government level product? I have a problem only with the government switching from uh, to street uh, in teams. Uh, so is there any issues with regard to that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as, a, as, as opposed to our competition out there who maintain separate platforms in order to offer FedRAMP and um, other high secure uh, classified level uh, infrastructures, uh, the Google Workspace suite of applications across the platform are FedRAMP compliant. So all of the applications are, are FedRAMP. And so if you have that so, sort of a requirement for, uh, for your government based needs, then we can do it in our, in our standard offer. And Anthony Brown asks, uh, Louis, uh, can integrators resell the, the Lenovo Google Meet kits? I think I know the answer. Yeah, the short answer to that question is yes. Obviously, you have to be a Lenovo resale partner. Mm -hmm. uh, but our, our distribution network with TD Cinex, Ingram Micro, and DNH all have kits normally in stock off the shelf. Right? And so as long as your integration partner is one of those, uh, and if you're not an integration partner with Lenovo and you want to be a one, it's super easy, right? Just give us a buzz and I think we can get you connected. There are some, you know, certification requirements around testing, but none of that is, is too difficult. The idea of what Lenovo is trying to do is, is really get to a place where we make this super easy, number one. But number two is give an offer and a platform so that our integration company partners can provide wraparound services, managed services, day one, day two, day three type services that usually are, you know, they fall to the IT department if nobody does that, right? And so yeah. we want to make it easy, uh, want to make it easy to run cables, want to make it easy to deploy. All those things are there to make it easy. Uh, and it's because we, we feel that making it easy provides ubiquitousness and then scale, right? And yeah. so all those things come hand in hand. And it's not going to happen overnight. But I think as Gabe mentioned, the, the fact that customers and employees are starting to demand this kind of work and this kind of experience, it just helps. If you can provide it, it's all better for you as well. So we, I actually have images of each one of the room kits. I'm going to pop up number one, uh, really quick, sorry, number three, really quick. Uh, slide, let me think, maybe, maybe get my numbers here. Slide number four, really quick. Image number four, really quick, because that is the small room kit. Describe what's in a small room kit. I love the remote in this, by the way. Yeah, so the small room kit is the compute, and the compute is the same thing that's in all the others. Uh, so again, when you start looking at which one's going to fit my experience the best, you know, we, we really want to get to a place where we're looking at compute in the room, Lenovo powered, and then either workspace or workflow dictates the peripherals. And so if you're in a small huddle space, a small focus room, you don't need a lot of things. You're deep in, in me, deep in workspace and all you want is a remote to use, that makes it super easy, right? So the, the price is, is a lot more palatable. You're not going to be having to need all these other things that you don't ever going to deploy. So you got a camera, you got a compute. And yeah, let's go back to that image really quick. Yeah, the bar. compute device is there in the front. The remote device is there on the right side. And then you have the, uh, the microphone uh, array with speaker bar and the camera above sure. that. That's right. Yep. And that's, that's, that. the, that's the small that's the kit. kit. That's a small kit. Yeah. yeah. And now let's like, take a look at the medium kit. 
because uh, the medium kit beefs up a little bit, especially the controller. You go from having the tiny remote control to having a touchscreen controller, which has the Google Meet launch app right there on the, on the device itself. What is that little thing in the middle there between the, between the compute device and the touch panel? So the touch panel, uh, that's the microphone puck, right? Okay. So when you look at uh, the medium kit, it's the exact same thing as a small kit. We add a microphone puck, a tabletop microphone puck that you can use. Again, Cat 6E run, RJ45 connection. So you could snake it through, conduit, run under, underneath the table, make it look really, really pretty. Then we add uh, a UI interface that provides more visual experience for those people that are going to do more scheduled calls, uh, a, a more publicly available room uh, inside the organization. That's a much more visual based interface for that. And then the sound bar is the same. The camera is the same. Yeah, there and then we is have actually, the large. We have the yeah. large image, uh, large kit there as well that I'm gonna pop up there, um, because that shows you the uh, the fact that now you can cover a much larger room. You have two right. microphone array speaker bars there. You have two remote pucks uh, um, microphones which cover how deep of a room can you cover with that? Right around 24 by 24 is about okay. the distance that 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 device will cover, which is most standard conferencing boardrooms that have about you know 18 people maybe 20 people around the table right. in that traditional conferencing room that that that's about it now beyond that that same compute power we have alliance ecosystem partnerships with companies like qsc that offer their solutions for larger auditoriums you know uh, town hall type rooms so you're going to use that experience with the google series one uh, chrome compute device to really make it work in a way that is again Compute, Lenovo, driving the room, powered by Lenovo, workspace and workflow dictate the peripherals. Again, just trying to keep it easy, keep it easily to deploy. And th there is one new one that we have that we added here recently. It's called the medium light or the small, small plus. We went with medium light, but it's, it is the same visual UI compute, no remote and no uh, microphone puck. And so that okay. way it's kind of an in-between. If you like the remote, you can get the remote. If you don't like the remote, you can get a touch panel. Uh, and again, as I mentioned earlier, if some of these pieces and parts start to grow on you, you start to expand your, your footprint, you know, you can add microphones from one to another and make it a little bit better of experience. That way you're not having to buy all these different things. The last best thing that I'll mention about all the kits is they all come in one box. So very focused on uh, you know, environmental issues, making sure that we are we're making the best foot forward that Lenovo can provide from a from a carbon footprint perspective. So you're going to get one box. Everything you need is going to be inside the box and it's going to be, again, super easy to deploy. Gabriel, I'm curious. Um, it's been interesting watching the development of Zoom and Teams, and it seems like they're trying to become more like Google has already been. Uh, Zoom started out as a video platform, then they added email, then they added chat, and then they added, you know, doc document sharing. And so now they've got telephone. Now but you've always had the, all that stuff. Teams start as email <laughs> and then they added all the, you know, they, they put, they found 360, they five, they finally put PowerPoint inside of it. I mean, they, they, but yet from the beginning, Google's always had this thing that was all cloud. And I think that's the reason why us old people had a hard time adopting it is that if it wasn't right there on our desk, we couldn't work on it on an airplane at that time. Um, mm -hmm. You know, back in the early days, remember cloud-based products would not work on an airplane unless you had an internet connection. So give me a break here. <laughs> I wanted to be able to do my presentations while I was flying. Uh, I had a hard time with that because I couldn't, right? I mean, I, I couldn't stay connected to the Google uh, Docs system, Google Workplace system back then. But it's changed a lot. I mean, really, it's it's funny how, you know, at the latest Zoomtopia, as there as Zoom was making their announcements, it was like, here's what we got from Google that we've added to our product as well. Well, you know, I mean, I, I don't know if I quite want to say me too, but you know, <laughs> following the footsteps of success, right? <laughs> uh, you know, know your competition and, yeah. uh, and their strengths, and and try to you know duplicate what you can is kind of what I think that the the product team's uh, model is uh, over uh, on that side. Um, but yeah, I mean, as you said, I mean, we started cloud first. We are software as a service before those terms were even real terms, you know. So that's just that's how that's our design philosophy, right? Everything is is built native in the cloud with security, robustness, and operational support all built in, you know, in mind, right? From a design principle. 
Um, and then evolving that over time to uh, you know take care of those use cases, like you mentioned. I'm you know, I'm a traveler. I'm on the road. I don't have internet connectivity ubiquitous to me, so I need an offline mode. But the moment that I get online, then all of my updates and change control and all of that is synchronized, and everyone knows what's gone on within the the document. And the real time collaboration can resume. Um, I think we lead the space, you know, with those applications. Uh, you know, I, I certainly I'm a little bit biased, uh, and that's. You know, one reason why I, I'm here with Google and, um, and I, I strongly believe in, in our products and technologies and, and the direction that our, our product teams are taking this. Yeah. And uh, one of the questions that came in is, is, uh, was um, from Ross again, asking if uh, Lenovo has any plans for a platform agnostic multi-platform compute products. I already know the answer to that, too, because I went to your booth at Infocom. <laughs> yeah. So th there's a lot of that happening, I think. Um, the cloud companies are the ones that dictate what we can and can't do. Yeah. Um, you know, there's nothing technically that stops Lenovo from building these things to fit whatever it is that you need. It's really more around licensing and contracts. But to be fair, you know, you're going to want to have the best native experience. And I think that's what the cloud organizations are really looking to, to provide is what, what's going to give me the best experience yeah. for me and my users. And so that's why they lead with native first. You know, I think going back to to the legacy Cisco Tanberg days, um, you know, you could do some interoperability. It was a little clunky. It was super expensive, right? And it was it was a, a nice to have, not a have to have. But we're starting to see a lot of organizations, very large organizations, demand interoperability and agnostic platforms. I think that the easiest thing to do is interoperability. You see how mm -hmm. handles interoperability with some of the other players in the marketplace. They do that today with Zoom and and, uh, and Cisco, and there's others that are in the works. Um, but everybody has that thing where they can provide some sort of interoperability. Uh, as far as Len Lenovo is concerned, we can provide you native experiences, uh, native solutions. Uh, and then some of the things that are coming down the pike are very much that. Um, I, I see. I have a different, uh, I have a slightly different thought on that too. I'm curious what, yeah. Maybe what you think on this specifically, and 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 I think it affects Lenovo as well. Yeah, well, I you know I think interoperability is key uh, because you know perhaps within our own enterprise we are are sticking within the, the the constraints of the the technology that's been provided to us. We're an all meet or an all Zoom or all WebEx uh, based or Teams organization, but if we're collaborating externally with any partner, customer, end users. Um, you know, many times they're bringing their own technologies to the table. And so yeah. you need to be able to work within the constraints of what they have to offer as well. And so, uh, you know, Google with our Google Meet uh, hardware platforms, we are we're supporting WebEx and Zoom interoperability. So it's you know, one button to join experiences, calendar of synchronization, no additional authentication or clicks required to join those meetings. And certainly we're investigating what it would take to get that that final partner into the mix there. Um, but I think that it's critical to have those capabilities. Now, clearly, from the end user application side, with you know, the web experience is native across all of them, having guest join experiences. But with all of the hardware that's deployed in these specialized, uh, focused conference rooms and huddle areas and so on, it is absolutely critical that the hardware has interoperability support for these platforms as well. And making it easy to use. I mean, if you don't have a one button to join experience these days, then your user is going to walk off. Yeah. Yeah. And my, I have an interesting, I, I have another thought on this too. I'm curious what you, what either one of you would think. I think it surprised a lot of people, the strength of the Euro, European Union's power to basically force Apple to put a USB-C connector on their phone. And I think that UC platforms are going to rise to that level of importance because everyone in the European Union, just like here, is making video calls and they're calling between countries, between organizations and starting to have problems. I hear about them all the time from my friends at other companies. And I have a feeling it's possible that the European Union could say you must have interoperability. And I know that sounds crazy that they would go straight to our industry, but our industry's broken. What UC platforms have broken way outside of our industry because so many schools uh, have kids work, uh, learning from home this way. And, uh, and I think that that might be a big driving factor. Now we don't have any control over that and we'll never, we won't know until that actually happens. But I, but with the power I saw them have over Apple and saying, you're going to stop using the daggone lightning connector and you're putting USB-C on there. Now, Apple did a really good 
was smart. They said, well, we're, okay, we're putting USB-C on there, but we have this special USB-C that, uh, that if you buy our cables, it works faster and better. So you, you still have that, you still have that, uh, that ecosystem there. And we had another question from Ross Bradley. He's asking, it's the same question though, right? Yeah, because he, he, he's, they're really wanting to get to the crux of the answer is that yeah. Tuesday at two, I have a, a zoom call at three, I have a meet call. And at four 30, I have a team's call. Right. And I don't want to have to go to different rooms or use different devices for that experience. And I think again, you know, the demand's going to have to come from customers uh, and, and even maybe some governments, right? Because yep. that's the piece. But, you know, as, as you, you mentioned Apple, right? There's a reason Apple wants you to buy Apple products. There's a reason Lenovo wants you to buy Google Series 1 products from Lenovo because we feel ours is the best one, right? And I think those are the kinds of things that it's really going to drive demand uh, and it drives competition, which is nothing but a good thing in the marketplace. Yeah. Um, but you have to get to a point where there's going to be some, some winners and losers, I think. Um, you know, and if you really look at what Google is doing, those are the things that it's always provided. Those are the things that it's always been. It was, Google was cloud before cloud was cool, right? I think a lot of those things really happen to make sure that customers and end users can do their jobs. Um, yeah, and, and also it should also mention Ross's question. It is possible to do what he's asking to have done today. The problem is you have to pay for three licenses for that room. Uh, you have to pay Microsoft, Zoom, and and, and Google. So you're yeah. going to have to have three room licenses. So it is possible, if, but yeah. you also have to use third-party products. Well, I mean, I think, you know, you, you look at this thing, right? And not as, it's not seamless is the problem. Yeah. So I think most people would rather at that point in time connect up a USB cable, get the video and audio out of their laptop, and connect to the uh, in-room peripheral devices. And I think that's yeah. when you see that going. That's why you provide that capability. Yeah, I think that's a big, that's a big question mark, right? Because... Yeah. The minute you ask an end user, and I'm talking about, you know, Steven Accounts Payable or Sally in HR, people that have absolutely nothing to do with what we're talking about, they want to walk into a room, hit a button, do their jobs. The minute you make it their responsibility to switch camera inputs. Yeah. To, I mean, I do this all the time and there's every once in a while my laptop flips yeah. over and it, I can't point. get my camera. Right. So you're taking yeah, the, we, we're in the industry. IT, <laughs> yeah. You're taking the IT's responsibility and yeah. putting it on the end user when yeah. you really should say, hey, this is our platform. This is what we're going to use. We're going to demand interoperability from our ecosystem alliance partnerships. And so there, there is no difference. When I'm on a meet experience, they make it work. Google's going to make that work for me in the cloud. I think they do a great job of that today. There's still more to come. Yeah. And there's, there's, and this is not an atypical question. And, uh, and, and ultimately it's complicated because the truth of the matter is they all could talk to each other if they wanted to, but it's, it's, it takes competitive companies literally cooperating on this one thing. And I, I suspect that they're probably more interested in the gaming market. No offense in cooperating. Well, I, mean, I think cooperating in the gaming market is probably higher on their list than you see because of the amount of money that's being thrown around in, in, uh, in esports and places like that. I think that's I mean, what we'll see first. I, I think you also got to pay attention to the fact that it costs a lot of money to develop these platforms. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's a lot of investment and in time and effort to bring these things to market then I'm just going to give that away. I don't think that's that's what organizations want to do. They want to provide yeah. end user experience, best possible. Ours is the best possible, so you should use ours. And I think that's until customers demand it constantly. I think it's it's going it's going to be a while before that happens. And, and Lucy, you said that it was available through TD Cenex. I know you have a partnership with them. Who else do you have a partnership with for those integrators online who are interested in uh, becoming uh, dealers for the product? ED Cynix, Ingram Micro, and DNH in the US. Okay. Uh, is, is and what about those... Europe? Do you know who who in Europe? Yeah, I'd, I'd have to look. I assume TD Cynix as well in Europe? Yeah, the, the Maverick side of that house is yeah. there. Um, I have a, a counterpart in EMEA that could answer all those questions. So if yeah. you need to get a hold of me or anybody on our team, we can point you in the right direction. Yeah, and don't forget all these, uh, the names, anywhere you find the names on the pages for, if you go back to the agenda page or you look, scroll up and down, you'll find all the link, all the names are linked to their LinkedIn profile. So you can connect with both these guys on LinkedIn. I'd encourage you to, and Gabriel, I'm sure you would love the feedback from the industry as well, because I know you want to make, continue to make uh, platform changes, but also modifications, additions, things like that. Um, you know, well, one of the things I think that a lot of people have been asking for is, 
more input capability so I can do higher level production, even though I'm working from home, uh, where, you know, where we don't have just the ability to share slides, but also maybe could switch inputs, have multiple devices connect to our computer without using an external USB switcher. Uh, is that something that Google's been looking at because of so many areas of the market you're in? I would think this is something that, for example, the gaming people would want. Yeah, well, you know, in the gaming community, they use open broadcasting studio yeah. OBS, right? And yeah. um, and many of us here use that as well. You know, I mean, I, I used it at the last couple of companies as a way to add in additional content and closed captioning other capabilities that aren't native to the platform. So that's certainly one way to extend it. I mean, we're always listening to our uh, end user feedback. I mean, that's one thing that we value heavily here uh, within the product organization is that, you know, when you fill out one of the feedback uh, forms and click submit, that doesn't go to a black hole that actually gets reviewed over here. And, and that's not a joke or a lie. We, we do take that feedback seriously. We review it and, uh, and, and we do, um, you know, prioritize a lot of our development around that feedback. Um, so if you, if you do have, features and functionality and, and little suggestions here and there, please submit them. You know, we, we want to hear about them and we want to see how they can help evolve and enhance the product, um, you know, for the masses. Yeah. And so I want to encourage all of you to go check out these products at Lenovo.com. Click on the smart devices tab. It's easy to find. Click on the smart devices tab. You'll see the Google Meet Series 1 room kits. They're already kitted up uh, for small, small, medium, medium and large. I didn't know about the small, medium, but that obviously uh medium light a, medium light medium <laughs> light small plus something like that but uh it's there all in the smart devices tab under lenovo.com uh Lewis, uh and gabriel thank you uh thank you very much for joining me i really appreciate it y'all were great and this was a great session and i hope that we've helped sort of like bring some awareness to what's about to happen because you know whether or not they've been affected by google meet yet they're about to be because as I said, these these uh, these twenty somethings and young thirty somethings are moving up in their organization, and they're gonna they're gonna ask for compatibility, and and they want their stuff. Uh, and yeah. uh, and although a lot of them want to work from home all the time, it's not necessarily mean it's going to be allowed. <laughs> they're still gonna want to go back to. They're still gonna be companies that want you to go back to the office. So, at some point, you're gonna have to go in the, in an office and work uh, and yeah. meet and collaborate. And I think that's the thing that we really want to hammer home right is that there are different workspaces there are different experiences depending on where you are at any given moment and, and the fact of the matter is is you want that experience to be easy helpful and useful and so yep. and that's i mean you couldn't have made it more simple uh, especially what i saw at infocom of these was was awesome i was really really impressed uh, i'm going to send it back to steph and megan who are going to close out the day i want to give kudos to steph for that background that she